You're with the Breaker Leggers, and we're in London's West End at the Donmar Warehouse to see the brand new musical Committee. So stay tuned to find out how many legs, whether it's break a leg or a leg. It. Keep up to date with the latest theatrical goings on in the world of Theatreland, including news, reviews and interviews, keeping your finger on the theatrical pulse. All you have to do is press subscribe right now so you do not miss out. What do we know about Committee? Well, its full title is... The Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs Committee takes oral evidence on Whitehall's relationship with Kids Company. Wow, that's an even longer title than Tony Kushner's The Intelligent Homosexual's Guide to Capitalism and Socialism with a Key to the Scriptures. I know, right? <gasps> which made it to our top five picks of 2016 and which you can catch just up there. Now, as you may or may not know, Kids Company were a London-based charity providing the poorest families in the UK with support in times of financial hardship. However, the charity struggled to meet its running costs and was given a grant of £3 million from the UK government in 2015 in order to survive with strict terms, including the chief executive, Camilla batman Gelich, stepped down and that none of the money was used to pay for staffing costs. These terms were not met and the government sought to recover the grant with the help of the Public Accounts Committee and that is the rather unorthodox basis of the musical. The pieces verbatim, meaning the word spoken, or in this case song, are taken directly from the committee's evidence gathering hearing. We've seen some other verbatim theatre, including All the President's Men, which we reviewed earlier in the year. And also, this isn't the first verbatim musical. Previously, London Road was hugely successful. This musical has book and lyrics by Donmar Artistic Director Josie Rourke and West End's Thal Wart, Hadley Fraser, with music by Tom Deering. In the cast is Stephen Ward himself, Alexander Hampton, who I've heard will fix your lower back for you. Stephen Ward, your friendly osteopath, I can fix your lower back for you. Sandra Marvin as na 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 Batman, Gelich. And Omar Ibrahim as ex-BBC creative director Alan Yentop. It's going to be really interesting to see how a piece of modern political history translates to the stage. It's 80 minutes straight through. So, we'll let you know what we think when we catch you at the end. So, we've come to the end of committee at the Donmar Warehouse. What did you think of that? I think the content was quite interesting. Uh, because it's something that's actually happened it, it's quite insightful as to what went on you're seeing um, two very passionate forces one on the side of the charity uh, how they very permanently believe in what they're doing uh, and how they're doing it and then this committee that is set up to look at actually what has gone on and why the committee why the charity has gone bust and that is quite interesting and insightful and at times was interesting and good in terms of content. Yeah, I think it um, presented the information in a, a different kind of, um, quite a compelling manner, you know, to have very, which musical theatre technique is, the songs are about, in any musical, are passionate moments that can't be expressed by words alone. And I think that's how they were employed here when the important points were raised either by the committee or by the passionate forces of Alan Yentob and Camilla Batman Galich they were sang because that's how they would express themselves in a musical and that worked well and it was compelling and interesting and it did take the source material to a different level. I think in terms of the score it was very some very close chromatic harmonies, which is just quite technically strong. Uh, so in terms of compiling and put, putting together something like this, you just admire the cast. 
in one respect for being able to perform it. A plus one of the performers has come in two two days ago, yes. I think. We had an understudy, well it wasn't even an understudy, I think she was introduced to the piece, Rebecca Locke, and had the um, lines on her in a folder, which worked really well in this environment, because it is a committee, so they all had their notes, and I think if it wasn't spoken about at the start, we wouldn't have batted too much of an eyelid. It no, it didn't well. detract at all. And I mean, what a feat to come into a piece and learn the staging and the harmonies and the music of a musical with 24 hours notice to be thrust on stage. And it's not even a, 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 when we say musical, you know, there's nothing entirely melodic about it at all. You're not, you're working with verbatim text, so there's no harmonies, there's no something you're leading to. It's literally words. It's almost For operatic. For me, it was much more of an opera than it was a musical. Yeah. I, you know, with musicals, you want to have these staged pieces, maybe duets with movement, with staging, with, with some sort of theme and there wasn't one in this particularly and therefore it, it should be committed the opera for me it had much more in common with uh, Le Boheme that we saw earlier this year or even um, you know uh, just the classic Puccini you know Tosca that kind of mm. Uh, that kind of style, very stylistically operatic. Which works quite well because as you're saying you're dealing with people in heightened emotion who care very passionately so you know the notes take them to what they're feeling you know it really connects and resonates with us. On a broader scale the the piece itself asks a lot of interesting questions as did this situation itself such as who carries the burden of responsibility? Where does morality lie when it comes to your own money? Is morality a different scale? Are commitments and responsibility, uh, you know, uh, consequentially different? If the um, if the, the funds uh, that the, these people find themselves in these situations and were handed out money left, right, and centre, but the money was nobody's really, or felt like it was nobody's. So did that ch change actions? It, it asked a very, very, very important questions. It was almost for me. It seems like it was important that, yes, that there's a quote to say that Kids Company was a 20-year a experiment of a charity, and yes, it was, but do we don't learn anything without experimentation, so maybe it was valuable, maybe that money had value, and the money that was lost and the money that was frittered away without consequence actually has bettered us in our understanding of how to run successful charities and delegate money accordingly. Yes, I think it asks all those kinds of social questions. How do we deal with the issues that, obviously, um, Camilla Batman Gelich had um, a, a strong passion and she believed she was doing good, but I guess it's how was that good being done and at what cost? How is it being governed? And I think the big thing, it was unsustainable. It was purely funded by the government and then it was such a small pocket then who were benefiting from public funds is that fair what about people in other cities why couldn't they have had uh, access to this kind of handout of funds although that's something they focused on then simply the handout of funds where i'm sure they they were saying they helped people children out in many other different ways in terms of accommodation services counseling all sorts of stuff but at heart these people are not bad people these people weren't bad people i thoroughly believe that they believed they were doing the right thing dealing with harsh deep issues um, in terms of the um, band, there was one pianist and then there were four strings. I thought it sounded really nice, quite beautifully orchestrated in a way. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Also, a great use of lighting, very simple set, very similar in fact to all the President's Men that we saw recently mm -hmm. in regards to set. Um, but there were moments where the cast got up and interacted with one another in a very theatrical way. Um, but yeah, I thought it was yeah. nicely staged for what it was, which is what can you get from a committee of people sitting around Cause talking not to a lot witnesses. You can do. Yeah, I mean, when we saw the president's men, it was literally a committee table, the two chairs opposite, and that was it. No one moved. Whereas within this, the committee table were on sliders, were on rollers, so they could open the tables up and come out from behind them, and then they took on other characters of uh, people within the community or people who had submitted either oral evidence or written evidence to the committee. So you got more 
more kind of background and context to what was going on. So the staging could have been very boring, but in fact, you know, they did add to it. They got up and they moved around the space, which I'm sure they wouldn't have done in, the, wouldn't have been allowed to do in the actual committee. No, intuitively so directed. I artistic would say. license yes. definitely um, pulled upon there. So, I bet you're wondering how many legs we are going to give this piece. Or committee at the Donmar Warehouse. We are going to give three. Three legs. Yeah, absolutely three legs. I feel like I've had an education. I've come mm. away learning about something that perhaps I would have only had a very passive interest in had it not have been presented in this medium. I think it asks some really important questions. And I think I kind of celebrate the chutzpah of the team that have decided to turn this into a musical, you know. A, why this topic? Why this? But yeah, good for them, that's what I say. I think it works well if you know the story, if it's something you're interested in or something you picked up on the news. I think if you're an outsider to the UK and your finger isn't on the political pulse of what has happened in that story, I'm not sure it would be something that would appeal to you. No. But I it is... I'd say it's definitely not from, for everybody. You've got to be very open-minded to the Baton Theatre anyway because it is a strange beast and you've got to have a passive interest at least in politics to find the, the topics that are explored in this musical interesting to you. Yeah. That's what we thought. Tell us what you think. Did you manage to catch it? Leave your comment below. Like. Yeah. Subscribe. Share. Follow us on Twitter. Also, as an aside, um, Hadley Fraser that um, wrote this um, piece, did the book and lyrics um, for for committee, is actually starring as in the lead in Young Frankenstein in yes. October, which we are looking forward to seeing. But right now, we've got to get off for more politics as we're catching ink at the Almeida. So look out for that review. Please do. We're the Breaker Leggers, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.